Hola chamas y chamos, welcome back to Álvaro Dev Labs. I am terribly hyped today because in this episode we are going to do something that I wanted to do from a long time ago, is to play with Ionic and the version for Vue. Why I am so hyped about it? Because uh, like three or four years ago, one of the first jobs that I got here in Barcelona was uh, using Ionic. And I remember those days with Angular JS and Ionic 1, and then we migrated to uh, Angular 2 with TypeScript and, uh, and Ionic version 2. So I'm pretty excited about this one because the long time that I don't touch Ionic, and since I now specialize in Vue, I'm really excited to see how they work together. And as a plus, we're gonna learn how to use Ionic Vue with Vite instead of Vue CLI. Before we get started, a quick video about our sponsors that make possible this kind of video. This video is sponsored by Storyblock. Looking for a CMS solution that is great both for marketing teams and developers? Look no forward. Storyblock is the headless CMS solutions that you always wanted to have. See how easy it is to change content for your website with a real-time visual editor creating a delightful customer experience for your teams. Go from a content update to production in no time. StudyBlock is easily integrable with multiple tech stacks, making your dev team's life easier. Go and try it for free at studyblock.com. So first thing that we will need to do is to install uh, the global uh, CLI solution for Ionic. So you can do it by npm installing um, dash g, which is global, at Ionic CLI. Click enter. Three days later. Now let's gonna check if we have installed it correctly. So let's check the version. Right now I'm using the 6.20.1. We can use this newly installed CLI to create a new application. So by using Ionic start, and let's call this Ionic song. We're gonna choose the template tabs. There are several uh, templates available uh, from Ionic. There is one with side menu, one is blank, and I normally use the tabs for demo purposes. We do dash, we say type view, and we hit enter. Three weeks later. After a couple of minutes, you should have a prompt like this in the terminal. This means that everything was installed correctly and also all the dependencies that we needed are installed. A quick disclaimer here, I'm not going to use PNPM in this tutorial because it wasn't working correctly, so I prefer to keep it simple and use NPM. Now let's check what our new application has as default. We have the normal structure with the source file. Here is uh, more common to Vue.js developers. It's a uh, source folder with components, router, themes, uh, main app, the view, a main TS, including uh, the create app and some of the compositables to include the plugin for Ionic View, and then the router. Then we have a lot of CSS being import here. We're gonna touch that in a little bit. And we have a ionic.config.json. This ionic.config.json is basically a JSON file that contains the configuration for your Ionic app. Here it has the integration with capacitor and the type is view. So capacitor.config.ts, what we haven't heard uh, about capacitor, but what it is, it's just basically a cross-platform native runtime for web applications. Long time ago, I remember it uh, there was something called Cordova. So I think this is in the nature um, uh, uh, successor to it. It has been developed by Ionic and provides a modern native container approach uh, for teams. So you create your web uh, app and then it mounts it into your Android or your iOS application. You can think about it as Electrum for desktop apps. You can also see some other uh, default files like the ESLint, a browser list, a configuration, uh, some Babel config for the Vue CLI, and we have Jest for uh, unit testing and Cypress for end-to-end -end testing. So it's kind of cool that when you create a new app with this Ionic CLI, it brings you everything you need to start creating, right? So before we start migrating this into Vit, uh, let's see what is prompt in the browser, right? So I already uh, used it here the script uh, Ionic serve. Okay, which is going to uh, use Vue CLI service serve. Okay, 
So let's go to the browser and here I have the application, the text applications, okay? Really simple. Okay, what do we have here? Um, we have an application with tabs. So if I change the tabs, it changes the content here, also the title with the toolbar here. And how is that working with view, right? Uh, it looks like it's using a kind of router. So essentially that um, in the app that the view, you're gonna have a component called Ion app. Uh, all of the Ionic uh, components are prefixed with Ion. And there is a router outlet that I guess is the one that handles the routing and renders the components for each one of the pages. Uh, if we go to router, uh, we have an index.ts that is used in the view router on the hood, right? Here we have an array of everything. It's TypeScript uh, ready, so amazing. And in the tabs page, which is the main component, we have several children uh, for each one of the tabs. So I guess it's that structure here. And also we have a create uh, router uh, composable where we are passing the story and the routes. Perfect. So let's see what that tabs page looks like. Okay, so it seems like there is a component, like a template component or layout component called Ionic page. So that one contains another one tabs, I guess it's for this um, below. And we have one component for the Ion router outlet, which is, I guess is this one. And we have the tab bar set to bottom where we have each one of the tabs here. Okay, looks nice. Then we are using uh, the normal script tags uh, with the find component, that's fair. And all the components, okay, that's cool. So we are individually importing all the uh, Ionic components and we are not installing them all in the uh, Ionic use here in the app. If we go to uh, main TS, sorry. So whenever we use Ionic View, it's not auto-registering all of the components uh, so to make it uh, tree shakeable. So we go to tabs page. Uh, what else can we see? Let's check one of the tabs page. Here, uh, again, the same structure, Ionic page, that's cool. Ionic header, I guess it's for this one. So, the, uh, so it's individually. In each one of the pages, we have a different tool. That's fair. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. Explore. Okay, so uh, we see how Ionic uh, comes together with Vue just nicely. So now that we have seen this, um, let's try to change something. Uh, for example, Ionic song here. Okay, we have light reload just working. Perfect. We can continue then. We can continue then by installing Vit and Vit Vue. Actually, I find a better way of showing how Ionic is working right now because uh, there is a VS Code extension for Ionic that allows you to have a preview right away on the editor, which I think is amazing. So you no longer need to open the browser. Uh, of course, if you want to check out the network tab or that tools, that's okay. You can do it in the browser, but if you are doing some a visual change here, you can check it out and it gives you several uh, different things. So how do you install it? Um, I'm just gonna open here. This is an extension options. So uh, here we can even run the application right away and so on. Um, let me see if I can open. So I installed this one here, uh, the official extension for Ionia and Capacitor development. And here they explain a lot of the, like the different features that it has have um, also you can create it in an empty project and just run the same command that we used before but from the interface of VS Code so it's kind of cool and there is a lot of more stuff but for now I'm just gonna show um, probably like this Ionic so Ionic so I'm running on the web which is this one and uh, we have the capacitor settings, we're going to see it afterwards, we can debug. Uh, we have the scripts, which are the same as the uh, package.json scripts on npm. Here we have the info for the splash screen and icon, we are going to touch that in a little bit. 
and some recommendations uh, how to add uh, an Android or a EOS project for capacitor to work in real devices. I'm not going to cover that in this video. In the next one, I, I will. And some of the capacitor plugins. That's also something that I really like about the preview mode. And it's difficult here because I have it zoomed so you can see the code better. And that's why it doesn't fit in one um, scroll like in, in the preview mode. But if I, I don't know if it's visible but here, it has like the side buttons. And if you click it, you can change the emulated device that you're using. Uh, in this case, for example, the iPhone SA, this is the iPhone. Um, let's see an Android one. And something really, really cool that you uh, might notice is that it changed the styles between Android and iOS. Let's see it again. This is the style for an Android applica uh, application. And if we choose, for example, the iPhone 12, you can see that the toolbar is no longer styled the same and the tab nav below is also different. I think we're ready to install Vit. So let's clean up a little bit because we have a lot of stuff that remains for the VCLI service and we want to get rid of them. Um, for now, I'm probably also gonna remove Jess because we are gonna use um, we're gonna use Vitest, so I'm gonna delete it. And here on the TS config, I'm just going to remove the types for Webpack environment and Jest. Also, I'm probably going to exclude for now everything that is in the test folder. Okay, so let's go to package JSON. Just giving me a little bit of trouble already. Ah, oh, because you can't find process, that's fair. Uh, that's because I remove here. I'm gonna put uh, nude. Okay, that's all. That should solve the issue. Okay. Here in the package JSON, everything that says CLI, we're gonna remove it. Also including the view CLI service here. Let's remove all of them. And also I'm going to remove everything that has to be with uh, Jest. Okay. Okay, maybe also the test utils. We're going to remove that. And this one right here. Okay, so let's open our terminal here. I'm going to open a different terminal. And here let's use npm install view tsc let's add um vid vid yes vid yes plugin view and also this library for import resolving directory uh, path okay so let's enter so now it's complaining because we removed uh, the view CLI, I guess. Um, so let's just close this now. And let's make the changes here that we need. So we need uh, vid.config.ts. And inside here, we need to define the config. So export default, um, define config. That's about right, something like this. And we need to add plugins. We are gonna add the view plugin. Let's see if it's out importing, no. So we need to import it, import view from uh, VGS plugin B. Okay, something like that, fair enough.
so for it to work we go to back JSON and we need to remove this and say um, this is gonna be a bit deaf and and this is gonna be bit it's gonna be view TC um, TypeScript no emissions and bit build I'm going to remove these two. We're not gonna use it for now, neither the lint. Okay. Let's save. Also, we will need the index HTML to make it work. So I'm gonna grab this one here from an example that I saw uh, from uh, Harrington on uh, GitHub. I'm gonna use index HTML. And it's just basically uh, HTML for a bit applications where the entry point is a main.ts. Okay, so that should do it. Now let's open the Ionic part, right? Uh, let's stop this one. Okay, and let's bring it up again. Hey, what happened? So it's complaining about uh, not having view CLI uh, for this command, right? So what we need to do then is uh, override the scripts to make it work. If we go to the package JSON, we can here say ionic surf is going to be with dev. Okay, and the same for Ionic build. So I'm just going to copy and paste this one here and I'm going to put Ionic right here. Okay, so let's save. Okay, let's try again. So now it seems like it's doing something. Let's see if it's actually working. Um, so I'm going to open the tabs one page here. I'm going to close this part and just below I'm going to say uh, to this one home and I'm going to save. Denied. And it's not working. Several days later. Okay, seems I managed to make it work. I don't know how. <laughs> uh, the only thing that I did was restart the VS Code because for some reason uh, the preview mode of Ionic uh, got like black and it didn't work anymore. So I just basically restarted and run again here. Uh, show Ionic um, this command here and it's working. So let me know in the comments if you have any problems with this. Uh, I was actually asking um, Mike uh, Harrington if the um, preview mode used the view CLI, but it doesn't seem like it. So let's test if the light reloading works before we continue, unless otherwise we will need to use the, the browser. Okay, so let's check it real quick. Uh, we are in the tab one, so I'm going to use Ionic some again. Safe, it is working nice and it's using bits, so it's quite fast. Okay, we're good to go for the next chapter. Let's now talk about theming and how Ionic does it in a really nice way. So, here we have a variable CSS. So, uh, in the folder source theme, you're gonna find a variables.css, and this is using CSS variables. Okay. To define the theme that you're going to use. In this case, this is the default values. Um, and something cool that I found here in, in the web page is a color generator that gives you a preview of how it's going to look when you change the colors. In this case, I'm going to use uh, the colors of my web page, okay? My brand colors. Uh, so I'm going to open up uh, Figma. You can see it here, but I'm going to copy and paste the, for the primary. So all the themes consist in several uh, colors. The primary, which is the main one. 
the ascent or secondary, which is used uh, um, in UI elements that are meant to be actions or those kind of things. Ternary um, as a decorator, but I know often use it. And then we have four different um, like success, warning, danger, medium, light. Okay, those are the basics. I'm gonna change this one here to my color of my um, of my web page. Actually, I use the I use it the other way around in, in my web page. I have the the ox for blue as a primary, but in this case, I want it to look different, so I'm gonna do it the other way around. I'm gonna choose. Uh, this color for the secondary one and if you open up here it automatically creates you the primary shade and the tint okay to have variations of the color another the cool thing is that uh, automatically creates you the CSS variables that you need for your theme and here it also gives you the preview of in Android or in iOS okay so you can take a look at how it's going to look Okay, for the ternary, I not necessarily have one, but let's put something there for the sake of the tutorial. So I'm gonna put like a yellowish one. So here, something like that. Okay, yeah, cool. So now let's copy this one here and let's go back to our code. Let's take this part here until here. And also um, something that I just realized, we also have the dark colors here. So probably it's a good idea to also change those, but for now, let's keep it this way. So let's save and automatically we have a change on all the theme, like all the, the components has been changed to the collect colors. And you can see also like the, in Android, this uh, ripple effect is available, okay? Um, let's try something. In this first tab, let's use the hello world of all the UI components, which is, um, so explore container name. Give me a second, I got lost. So yeah, tab one, Ionixum, yeah. Okay. If I change to iOS, oh, so this one is for Android and this one is for iOS, interesting. So we need to change both here. Ionic one and Ionic two, okay. And the Splur container, I guess, is the same one. So it's a component that is shared between them and you pass something, yes, okay. So let's remove that Explorer container and let's put here, um, let's try the hello world of components, which is a button. It says, uh, don't touch me. Okay, so here we have uh, with the correct colors. If we want to change the variant, let me check how it is. Okay, so we have the components and let's check the button. And here we have the different stuff, like if we want to fill it, the size, you should, okay. So it's color. Okay, here we go to our button and we say color equal secondary we're in the tab too so you can see it change uh, let's try success okay nice what else can we change here if we use expand it will take the whole width like a uh, full width you also have um, Blog and fill outline. Let's see what this one does. Okay, it creates like an outline component. Okay. 
Oh, if I remove the color, it, it shows nothing. Okay, interesting. It has an error because this component is no longer there. So let it remove it. Okay, so it seems like it, it will not update if it found an error. Probably something in the console that says, uh, hey, um, you have a, um, an error on the code. That's fine. Now let's explore more UI components that are available inside Ionic because one of the benefits of using this library is that it comes with a lot of pre-built components. I think there are web components, so they're available in multiple frameworks. Um, to check them out, uh, you can go to ionicframework.com, docs, components, and here you will have a list of all the components available. Uh, we have from action sheets, alerts, badges, uh, the button that we were using, uh, form components like checkboxes, chips. This is the ion content that we're using. Um, it's the kind essential way to interact with and navigate through an app. Okay. Uh, no idea what that means, but I guess it's necessary for the navigation. We have infinite scroll, we have inputs, um, you name it, models, okay? So I'm going to use uh, something simple for now, for this tutorial. I'm going to use a card. And we can also see the preview between the two types uh, with iOS and Android, how the component changed between uh, both of them. And here, um, as I was telling, they use a stencil for the components. So here we have the different implementations of it. Ion card, uh, plain JavaScript, React, how to use it with React, and here how to use it with you. So basically we're gonna copy and paste this one right here, and we are gonna use it between a container. What I did was style a little bit a uh, div inside here uh, to make things more likely to uh, like an application, so center and stuff but it's just basic uh, CSS, okay? And here, let's copy and paste this. So we have a card, right? Uh, for some reason, I have an extension that takes all the, the icons for icons and it gives you the preview here. So I guess it's identifying the card as an icon instead of a template, but it's working, uh, it's, it's not, um, it's not doing any, anything funny. So if we want to add an image, I guess only by adding the image here. So I'm gonna add one from um, one of uh, the art that I used to do. Uh, so let's, okay, it's working. And let's just put it as it was my portfolio, right? So this is gonna be like the, um, we can actually do it in a, in a different way. Uh, let's use the components did. Um, instead of hard coding stuff. So set up function here and we need to return something. We don't know yet what. And we're gonna create a reactive uh, state. So card one is gonna be equal to reactive. Okay. So media is gonna be the image right here. Okay. So let's remove it from here and put it here, probably between quotes, comma separated. So we want to return the card one. Uh, let's use a title and subtitle, what could it be? Well, let's put the category, right? So in this case, it's gonna be not, it's not all in canvas. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, let's put it like art. And as a um, description, I'm gonna keep exactly the same one. <laughs> uh, I like the description that comes by default. Okay, we need to use template quotes probably. Yes, indeed. Okay, something is not okay, -ish, what it is. Expected. Okay, so it doesn't like that. Okay, what else do you not like? Yes, we miss two dots here. Okay, so here we will have 
uh, source car media is car one SNL let's put the car title here car subtitle car one subtitle and here car title and let's save and in the content here let's put car one description okay and that's how easy you can create a component um, we can also change here I want to see how it looks in in iOS so it, it does the, the rounding and this uh, subtle shadow in the UI so it's quite nice and that's how easy it is to use a component in Ionic you just need to check out the um, the documentation with the different components and it's pretty explanatory also something uh, I will put the I will put the link for the documentation on the description below so you can have it. And that's pretty much for today's video. I'm very happy with the results. It's really fun to use Ionic with Vue. It works right away. And in the next episode, we're going to see more complex stuff like um, deploying on an Android device and also simulating in an iOS device using Capacitor. As always, don't forget to subscribe. It's free. Hit that bell for more videos like this, and if you have any questions, drop it in the comments. I will be happy to answer. Happy coding!